Hey guys, welcome back to the channel for another video. Now, in today's video, we have something very special in store, and that is a review of the Seastar S30, which was just released by ZWO. In this video, we're going to be testing out how well the Seastar S30 performs on deep sky objects like the Andromeda Galaxy and other objects within a short amount of time, and we're going to compare images taken by the S30 to images taken by the S50 to see if it's really an upgrade or downgrade. We already know that the Seastar S30 has a better sensor than the Seastar S50 sensor, and the Seastar S30 has a wide angle lens built into the body. Let's check it out. I can already tell that the weight of the Seastar S30 is about the same weight as the Seastar S50. You can already see that it is narrower because of the smaller aperture, but it is about the same width as well. I'm wondering how well the actual tripod is going to handle it. I'm not sure if it's a heavy duty tripod or not. I'm assuming that it's not since this is a much cheaper device. This little tripod actually reminds me of the original Dwarf Lab tripod that came out. And there we go. I do like that they went with a white design instead of a black one because whenever I was doing solar imaging with the Seastar S50, it would often almost overheat because the black color retains a lot of that temperature. But since it's white, most of the light's going to get reflected and I shouldn't have to worry about that as much. Here is the solar filter. It's magnetic and you can already tell the difference between the Seastar S50 uh, aperture size and the Seastar S30. This filter is tiny. And just like that, I'm already connected. So I'm going to open up this arm and take a look at that wide angle lens. There we go. Let me go ahead and clean this off. And I like the way that they did the design on it. You can see the power indicator here. Uh, instead of it being uh, small little red dots on the side that were somewhat bright, it has these three dimly lit battery indicators. So that's nice as well. There's this panel here on the back and I'm not quite sure what it is yet. Uh, probably find that out eventually. But there is the wide angle lens. Let's go ahead and take a look at it with scenery mode. And you can see the wide angle, thankfully, Thankfully, they made this in landscape mode instead of portrait mode. Uh, I was really worried that they were going to do it in portrait mode. And personally, in my opinion, that wouldn't look very nice. I like what I'm seeing so far. Even though that lens is very small, we're seeing a good amount of resolution. It looks like it pairs well with the sensor itself. And apparently, if you double tap things, it will automatically go to them. So you don't actually have to try to slew to it yourself. That's handy. I didn't know that. The resolution is looking great so far and I'm really looking forward to trying this out tonight on some deep sky objects. So I'm going to wait till the sun goes down and we can take it out to try it. I'm sure it's pretty easy to tell, but it is now nighttime and the super moon is looking absolutely incredible. Tonight is the night of the beaver moon. And we're going to be attempting to image the Andromeda galaxy and some other deep sky objects, despite the fact that we have a lot of moonlight. But first, what I would like to take a look at actually is this full beaver moon to see how big the moon fits into the screen in comparison to the Seastar S50. So let's perform a go-to on that. Now, something definitely noteworthy about the Seastar S30 tripod is that it doesn't have a built-in level like the Seastar S50 tripod did. The reason for that is that a level is no longer necessary, I guess you could say, due to the fact that it now has a built-in horizontal calibration feature, allowing you to accurately track deep sky objects no matter what tilt you have your Seastar S50 at. And in regards to actually locating deep sky objects such as the sun or the moon, Leveling your tripod was never actually necessary due to the fact that the Sea Star was almost never able to locate those objects. It was honestly a rare chance that it would. So now that we have this wide angle lens built in, it should be fairly easy to locate it. So it points the Sea Star in the general direction of where the moon is. And then using the wide angle lens, you can much more easily locate where the moon is in the sky. And you're going to see it pop up on the screen in just a moment. And there it is right there. And in order for me to perform the go-to, I just double tap. And now the moon is almost centered. Let me just make some slight adjustments. So that is now in the center of the screen. And just like that, I'm going to perform an autofocus, which is always extremely accurate with the C-Star. It's definitely something that they did really good at in development for the software and the firmware. And just like that, we have the moon clear as day. So here's a live video feed of the moon from the Seastar S30 in comparison to the moon from the Seastar S50. 
As you can tell, the Seastar S50 has a much more narrow field of view in comparison to the Seastar S30. However, they both have about the same amount of clarity, same amount of details. So for me personally, I do like what they did with the Seastar S30 simply because if I'm using this small of a telescope, I'm likely going to be imaging objects such as the Andromeda Galaxy or the Orion Nebula, which both take up much larger portions of the sky rather than trying to image smaller deep sky objects. So for me, the Seastar S30 is definitely a huge plus to my collection of telescopes simply because it's so portable, it's so easy to use, I can just charge it up and take it wherever I want to go. And the details here, as you can see, of the moon look absolutely incredible. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what deep sky objects such as the Andromeda Galaxy look like and other deep sky objects, which you will see show up here in a minute. What I'm planning on doing is I'm going to allow this to run and I'm going to show three different video feeds of it live stacking three different deep sky objects. And after that, I'm going to show the final stack and do some processing on it as well. So you can see how much details you're able to pull out, how nice of an image that you can get. Let's get right to it. This morning, I downloaded the files from my Seastar S30 onto my laptop to perform some post-processing on the Andromeda Galaxy and the Orion Nebula. And these two pictures that you see here are the original stack pictures taken directly from the Seastar S30 before post-processing, and here is what it looks like after post-processing. This goes to show that the Seastar S30 can be used not only for EAA, but also for post-processing if you were to want to try to advance in your astrophotography. Another notable thing is that if you take a look at this much more expensive rig's image of the Andromeda Galaxy cropped to fit the same field of view as a Seastar S30, you'll see that they both have almost the exact same amount of details and almost the exact same amount of coloration, meaning that this small telescope priced at only $349 can get almost the same detail as a $3,000 astrophotography rig. So definitely the price that they set this telescope at is a very good deal, especially because it has built-in filters good resolution, a good sensor, and good quality optics. In regards to solar functionality, the Seastar S30 is also a really good option for things like total solar eclipse. Since it has a much wider field of view, it can capture the entire outer section of the sun, uh, the chronosphere, the light that you would see once the sun is completely blocked. You wouldn't have any of that cropped out like you would with Seastar S50. Plus it has a magnetic filter, so it's easier to take that off instead of trying to remove the snap-on filter. So. Seastar S30 is definitely a major upgrade in regards to solar. It has the same amount of resolution, just about you're going to get the same amount of detail. So definitely for me, the Seastar S30 is a huge upgrade over the Seastar S50 in many different ways. I know that a lot of people view the Seastar S30 as a downgrade since it has a shorter field of view, smaller aperture, but in reality, it collects light at the same amount of speed. You're going to have about the same amount of details and you're gonna be able to take a much better looking image because it's gonna be a wider field of view. And using this small of a telescope, you're probably gonna be taking pictures of objects, like I mentioned, um, the Andromeda Galaxy or the Orion Nebula, just wider objects. So the Seastar S30 is definitely a telescope that I would recommend to not only beginners, but also advanced astrophotographers who just want a more portable telescope to take with them, maybe on hikes or on long vacations. Um, I did forget to mention, it does come with a little bag, but because mine is a prototype, I did not get the bag with it, but they will be sending out a little portable carry-on bag um, with the finalized product. If you'd like to help support the channel financially, I do have an affiliate link in the description below. So I would get a part of the commission if you were to purchase the Seastar S30 at no cost to you. And again, if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Please stay tuned for future Seastar S30 and Seastar S50 and just ZWO. Uh, in general content in the future. And as always, I wish you all clear skies.